everybody! Welcome to Let's Look At. You have to win the game! This is one of my favorite kinds of Let's Look Ats to do because this is not a game of the year contender, but it's a good game. It's totally solid. I've had a lot of fun with it so far. Uh, and it's free! It's free on Steam. That almost never happens. There are free to play games on Steam, but this is a straight up free to play game. No microtransactions, nothing along those lines. It's almost like a, you know, an old, uh, old school uh, Newgrounds style release or something like that, and uh, maybe something that's a little bit of interesting trivia for you. This is made by J. Kyle Pittman, aka Pirate Hearts, aka half of the, uh, you know, two brother development team, Minor Key Games, who are most famous, I guess, for releasing Eldritch, because that was their first game, I believe, as a studio anyway, uh, that came out back in, like, October of 2013. You know, the roguelike HP Lovecraft style thing going on? This is totally different! Nothing like this at all, but I made, I believe it made it through Greenlight. It was originally released in, like, the summer of 2012 or something like that, and we're gonna start a new game. As you can see, I played about 40 minutes so far. That put me, I mean, there's a, the progress meter on the screen, that put me, like, 70% of the way through the game. Um, so I guess I'll just show you the different kinds of modes here. There's original, you have to win the game, and then there's extra spicy, which is a more difficult campaign. It's relatively easy, uh, at least so far on the uh, original mode. And there's also normal, YOLO mode is basically just like hardcore, if you die once you're done. Obviously this is being tongue done tongue in cheek. And playable cat DLC, you're a cat and you have nine lives. So YOLO mode, one life, cat mode, nine lives, and normal mode, default difficulty setting with basically unlimited uh, possible deaths. Now what this game has kind of a, uh, a cool hook associated with it is that it looks like you're playing this through like an old CRT monitor on like the Amiga or something like that. And after a while it might look like uh, it's a little bit like fake-ish right now. I promise you that after you watch this video for like maybe 45 seconds, 60 seconds, that monitor is gonna look real to your peripheral vision. Like I'm staring at it now and I've played it again for like 40 minutes now. It just looks like I'm staring through my monitor into another monitor. So the easiest game to actually compare this to is definitely uh, Terry Cavanaugh's VVVVVV. Not just in visual style, which is definitely... I mean, it seems like a game that's heavily inspired by VVVVVV, let's put it that way. But it's not, like, um, as novel in its platforming. You know how you reverse gravity in VVVVVV. And this, I'm gonna try to stop saying the name of the other game because it's a hassle to get out of your mouth. But this is very much just like a standard platformer, and it's a collect-a-thon platformer. Your goal is to collect as many of those money bags as you can actually see. Every one that you get takes you 1% closer to being able to finish the game. Uh, there's also some Metroidvania elements, a little bit of backtracking necessary. You get abilities as you go. It seems like it probably takes about an hour, hour and 20 minutes to maybe play through the game uh, all the way. The bells are respawn points. If you die, you respawn to the respawn points. In any case, let's get started here. We're gonna play um, as much as I can within like a half hour or so. We have no means to kill enemies. If they touch us, we die. All we really have the ability to do is avoid enemies and, uh, you know, we can jump, obviously, and we want to collect as many of these uh, sack of pennies as we possibly can. That one was worth two cents or am I crazy here? I think I might be crazy. Was there any way for us to get down there? No. So there's gonna be a lot of areas that are gonna be impossible for us to actually uh, visit. But as we get uh, a little bit further along, along, I should say, we'll unlock things that will make that more feasible. So we can just get killed here. After you get um, the money bag, it doesn't really matter if you die afterwards. You respawn after you respawn uh, immediately after. So this is basically where the game starts. Which path will I take? Let's start by going to the right here. One thing I will say is kind of like a, a negative about the game. Not to start things off on the wrong foot unnecessarily, but... Um, I do think that it's kind of unfortunate that there's no, like, background music. Some BGM would have been pretty nice here, uh, because after a while it does become pretty, gr pretty grating to just have, like, bloop, 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 over and over and over. Um, there is occasionally some variation in the sound if you're, like, fighting a boss, for example. Um, I'm just gonna see if maybe we can get... Uh, that one wasn't even close. Maybe if we jump from the earlier one, otherwise we'll have to Metroidvania our way out of that. No, I don't think that one's gonna be possible for us just yet. But we will get some new uh, abilities soon-ish. There might even be a boss rate over here. Apparently not. Uh, but that's okay. But yeah, the, the soundtrack does get a little bit grating at some points. We can't make that jump yet until we get another ability. But apart from that, it's a really solid game. Um, it's it's quick. V V V V V V is quick as well. But that's, that doesn't stop it from being, uh, you know, quite lovely. Oh, I never went to this area before. I can't, unfortunately, do anything in this area. But I never even looked to see if there was anything over there. I think we have, a, like, a pseudo-boss fight approaching soon. Unfortunately... Um, there's really no uh, way for me to do a lot of these things over here just yet. So we're gonna fall down. Now we're gonna get out of the way of the crabs. Okay. So this reminds me of, um, you know, basically a lot of free platformers that I've played over the years, but it, it's kind of a breath of fresh air because it's so rare to have something released uh, on Steam for free. I mean, even this you could reasonably charge five bucks for, and I think ple people would be reasonably happy to pay it. So this is one of the, uh, boss fights that you've got here, and I hope that the developer's not listening to this, and they're like, 
Oh shit, I could charge five bucks for it? I really messed up. Uh, that is not <laughs> what I'm trying to get across here, but, um... It is, it's just kind of nice to see something released kind of like for goodwill and exposure. So this is one of the orbs that we got here, is the Crimson Aura activates red ghost blocks. Um, what that means is that if we come across an area that normally, uh, this would have been just like, you know, Super Mario World style, like exclamation points, it, they would have just been like outlines actually. Um, now they will be filled in with red blocks, which will actually allow us to platform up a little bit here. Now this, oh, that was a place we've already been to. Sometimes the checkpoints are a little bit uh, further away than I'd like, but for the most part, the game does a pretty good job of uh, spacing them out properly. It's just if you die in a stupid way, sometimes you can uh, end up screwing yourself a little bit. So there's one upgrade that we've gotten there, there one Metroidvania-style thing that we've gotten there that's going to help us out. And as you can see, you know, we're 11% of the way through the game, uh, according to the collectibles that we've got here. And I never actually went to this si Oh, that was stupid of me. I never actually went to this side before. Uh, when I played through it off camera, so maybe there's like some kind of seam over here that I missed that would have helped me actually finish the game. Uh, prawn shot first. I, uh, like that a great deal. All these bosses are basically just bullet hell. Uh, I wonder if we do duck under here and then, okay, we can jump over like that. And I want, oh, we can't get to that, uh, money bag yet though. There is an ability we'll get later that'll make it possible. Okay, this is actually a really, uh, kind of difficult part of the game. I thought we'd be starting relatively easy here, but no such luck. Now, just be careful those did bounce. Oh, good. Uh, there is a switch we can get later that will make it possible for me to actually get through there. But for now, I think we're just going to have to leave. So that's good. We've at least gotten 13% of the way through the game. We've been playing for, what, like six or seven minutes? It's not particularly long. If you look at Steam reviews of the game, um, people with like an hour and a half played are like, Hey, I played it. I beat it. It was fun. And uh, I think that's okay. Especially for a game that uh, charges you exactly zero dollars to be a worthwhile kind of use of your time is is nice. It reminds me of, you know, the way some... I'm not one of those people, by the way, that laments like, Oh, indie gaming is all about the money now. Everybody needs to make a living wage and it's terrible, right? That's, that's not really who I am and you know that. Um, I will say, immersion breaking, why doesn't the sack of money fall down if the blocks aren't there? Show me the birth certificate, pirate hearts, anyway. Um... Might be able to get a money bag down here, but yeah, um, it reminds me of kind of like, a you know, the yesteryear, slightly, of indie gaming, where, um, you know, you, you just go to, like, back when I did go to r slash gaming in, like, 2008, 2009, and a lot of things, the links would be like, hey, here's a free Flash game that's actually pretty awesome, check it out, and then you'd, you know, muck around with it for 45 minutes, and you'd be like, you know what, that actually was pretty cool, uh, thank you for posting that link. This reminds me of that a little bit, uh, you know, games like... Don't look back, uh, you know, the original N, uh, I've mentioned VVV many times, but, uh, that is the game that definitely shares the closest similarities here. Uh, we're gonna get this money bag right here, and we're gonna see how far we can go over the course of this video. I want to at least show off a, oh, we have to go down this way. I want to at least show off a couple of the upgrades, so you can see that it's not just like, you know, jumping puzzles that are very, very simplistic. We will get upgrades beyond just activating blocks, uh, presumably we'll get those even over the course of this video. So we're looking for a room called... The throne room, or the, like, the foot of the throne, or something like that. I think it's across from Ven's banality, or, like, it's attached to it at some point. I guess not. Unless maybe through the underside there? Yeah, I, I can get to that, so... Let's do that. In a weird way, though, I don't want to show off too much, uh, of the actual game, because, of course, it's gonna be, uh... It better if you play it for yourself, and there's no reason not to play it for yourself, considering the price, if you're into platformers like this. Um, more money for us. Uh, but... You know, if, if I show off too much, that kind of ruins the surprise, and, you know, you can solve some of the puzzles for yourself. There's some puzzles that are actually difficult in terms of execution as well. Uh, yeah, that's gonna kill us if I try that. I'm not gonna do that. Um, yeah, it's not just puzzles that are like, you know, uh, how do I conceive of being able to beat this? There's actually puzzles, uh, in the game that are fairly easy to see. This is Foot of the Throne. Fairly easy to see what you're supposed to do, but actually, uh, quite difficult to actually succeed on them in the future. So we're fighting Ursula from the Little Mermaid here. We're not really fighting. Got like a real Super Mario Land vibe here. Not Super Mario World, Super Mario Land, the weird, you know, Game Boy edition of the game that is still pretty good even though it bears weird, like, non-resemblances to the original Mario. So we're gonna jump like that and make it through. And this gives us the uh, Cerulean Aura, which activates blue ghost blocks. I promise not everything that we get in this game, not every upgrade that we get is just going to be, like, uh, different colored blocks activating. I think those are the only two, actually. The only two that I know of, at least. 
and we're about a quarter of the way through the game. So yeah, I mean, I think I've said my piece on the game, but I am gonna play it a little bit further just because I like playing a bit, like genuinely, there's a, there's a lot more strengths than weaknesses here, let's put it that way. Ooh, we barely made it, but we made it. And we can get a little bit more money. Um, sincerely, there's no reason not to play this, and that's like a pretty glowing endorsement, but at the same time, there really isn't any reason not to play this because it's free and it's fun. I guess the, the reason not to play this would be if you don't enjoy uh, platformers like this. If you don't enjoy VVV, if for whatever reason you fucking hate VVV, VVV, definitely don't try this out. Um, but if you like it, uh, you know, find a, find yourself a rainy afternoon and maybe spend some time with this. It's actually an awful lot of fun. Now, gotta be cool here. All right, we made it. That's actually a lot easier than it looks. And I really like, I, I can't stress enough that I really, really like the visuals of it as well. I mean, that's like the most obvious thing when you first look at it. That being said, um, oh yeah, we have to go down this way. Uh, that being said, it's, it's really, really neat. Uh, and you don't see a lot of games anymore aping this visual style. You see a lot of games going for that, like, NES style. You see a lot of games going for uh, SNES style, obviously. And I even see games uh, fairly frequently trying to evoke, like, a... Uh, original Game Boy style, you know, like Two Brothers was an example of that. Uh, there's another game called Rad Ray Gun. It's coming out, uh, I think it's being published by Midnight City, the same guys who did the PC version of uh, Double Dragon Neon, called um, Super Rad Ray Gun. It's like a, an extended director's cut release of that. Uh, that. That really apes the visual style of the original Game Boy games, but this, like, old school, like, CGA PC style stuff, you don't see that uh, too much anymore. And I think it's. I'm not going to say it's a shame, because some of those games look pretty bad. This is a, a dangerous room here. Um, but it's kind of neat. It's it's novel. Let's put it that way. So what we want to... Uh, you know what? I've kind of botched this, actually. I, I would really prefer to... Uh, ooh, that was kind of close. I would really prefer to be in that last room that we were just in, because there was a coin in there I could have easily gotten. But that's my bad. That's okay. Oh, if we go left, we end up in the other room up top. Okay, so that's what we want to do. I, although it's not, because then we respawn back here. Okay, good to know, good to know. This is actually one of the more difficult jumping puzzles I've encountered over the course of the game. So it's this fucking bat that's the problem. I can't do anything about him as far as I know. What I gotta do is jump behind him. This might be... Ah, oh, that was like our most likely crack at it, I would say. And it's really difficult to get the timing right here. I will say that I think this this jumping puzzle, unless I'm missing something, this jumping puzzle struck me as exceptionally difficult. Ooh! Okay, we made it there. A little touch and go. And then for this one, um, we can learn about some new areas. So let's go over here. It's basically, it's, it's an open world, sort of. Um, but there's branch, not branching paths, but there's different paths you can take. We don't have to do this area right now. We could do it later if we want to, but we're already here, so why don't we do... A uh, weird portal area, and we should unlock another kind of, like, you know, Metroidvania or Mega Man style skill that will help us progress a little bit further. So, hopefully I haven't misjudged uh, the skills that I need to be here. Typically, uh, we don't want to go to that one yet. I think there's a little bit more, um, you know, collectibles that we can get over here. Ooh, this is kind of a bad jump here. I like the names of the rooms, too. I mean, again, it's very reminiscent of another game that shall not be named. Uh, not that I think this is a ripoff or anything like that, but the inspiration is clearly worn on the sleeve. But, uh, you know, that obvious movie quote, Snakes on a Line, of course. You guys, you haven't seen Snakes on a Line? Oh, it's, it's wonderful. It's about, um, it's about an artist with dementia. Uh, so we've entered kind of like a, not a secret area, but a, a special area here that will allow us to uh, get some more collectibles. And after we beat one more boss, maybe we'll uh, call it quits here. Uh, and maybe not every reference in the game is, is fresh, but that's okay, as long as the crab's fresh. And I think it's it, the best thing to say about it uh, is that, yeah, it's, it's a good diversion. But beyond that, I could totally see it getting repetitive if it was longer. But because it's not longer, it's totally fine. It doesn't actually wear out its welcome. You know, every boss that you fight is basically exactly the same way. Uh, it, it's not the most novel game design of all time, as you might expect. Ah, uh, that was so close. But, um, well, it lasts. It, I've had fun with it. Uh, and I nearly, uh, oh, that was so stupid of me. Nearly beat it uh, when I was playing it off camera. You know, it only took me like 20 minutes or so to actually get back to the point that I was at before. So maybe I will go back and actually uh, finish it because I, I like a lot what I've played it so far. But I'm a sucker for platformers too. And if you're not, uh, then, then you might find yourself not necessarily being so fond of it. So we get the spring heel boots here. These will allow us to jump in midair. Uh, which is very, very useful. This takes us back to the surface. Do we want to go there? We could, or we could do some more exploration down below first. I do think that, you know, and again, I'm glad that the game's free, don't get me wrong. 
But uh, I do think that this could be like a, a a monetary release if maybe just had some background music. Not that there's anything wrong with the way that it's released right now. That was a very stupid death to me. So now we have a mid-air jump. Uh, pretty integral for a lot of puzzles that we end up encountering here. We also, you know, will end up getting items like gloves, and the gloves will allow me to, you know, stick to walls, which makes all sorts of other kinds of creative uh, jumping puzzles happen here. Uh, sneak under this guy, and we're almost 50% of the way through, but we'll wait until we get back to, like, that center hub world. So, yeah, I would really recommend playing, um, you know, you have to win the game. Basically... Is it worth your time is the only question that we have to answer here rather than is it worth your money? And I think the answer to that question is absolutely. If you uh, if you enjoy uh, platformers at least. If you enjoy, you know, maybe going through some trial and error with respect to the jumping puzzles that you encounter. You don't get frustrated too easy. You like games like Super Meat Boy. Uh, oh, we totally need the gloves for that part. You like games like uh, Super Meat Boy, Terry Cavanaugh's Magnum Opus, which I mentioned many, many times. I would absolutely recommend checking it out. Um, I know with free-to-play games, it's easy to be skeptical of being like, oh, well, it's free to play, but maybe that is because it's shitty. Not in this case. We've already been down there, okay. Not in this case. In this case, uh, this is definitely, you know, a nice little uh, afternoon that you can spend courtesy of Steam and uh, and J. Kyle Pittman, I guess. Well, we'll probably cut the video here because I think that there's not really necessarily that much more to talk about. just wanted to showcase what is a really a feel-good experience on Steam, if you will. So, if you're interested in picking it up, there will be a link in the video description below to just download it on Steam. It's like 100 megs. You could have it in uh, a matter of minutes if you're interested in playing it for yourself. Still plenty of game to explore here. Um, the the most intriguing parts I haven't even encountered yet. The puzzles, uh, the jumping puzzles, I should say, do get uh, a little bit more difficult. So, um, yeah, check it out for yourself if you're interested. And, of course, uh, on my personal level, if you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more uh, first impressions like it in the future. But for now, uh, we're going to go back to the surface just in case I want to complete this game at some point. I don't want to forget where I actually am. We'll make that jump that was otherwise not going to be plausible. And we'll get back right to the uh, starting point here. So, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time.